Ladies and gentlemen, what is going on? Welcome to another video. My name is Nathaniel Morton and I am a strength and conditioning coach who specializes in vertical jump training. And in today's video, we have another collaboration with the one and only Knees Over Toes guy. You guys loved the last video that we did together, so we are doing it again. And if this video gets 2,000 likes, we will do a third video. So go ahead and click that video right now and comment jump down below in the comment section if you want a free body weight vertical jump training program. In today's video, we're going to give you two more exercises that you can use to increase your vertical jump. And it's going to be a little bit of a twist. Knees over toes guy is going to teach you jump balance and the importance of keeping your body balanced and symmetrical and being able to dunk off of all approaches, being able to dunk off of all plants. And then I'm going to take you through depth jumps and I'll teach you why I like depth jumps and why it can help you increase your vertical jump as high as possible. So the first thing is going to be me teaching you depth jumps and then the second is going to be knees over toes guy teaching you jump balance. Let's go. Depth jumps, ladies and gentlemen, is one of the best exercises that you can do to increase your vertical and jump higher. But a lot of people get this wrong, so what I'm going to do is give you a rundown of how to properly do depth jumps and show you how to incorporate it into your workout plan. So, the purpose of doing depth jumps is to absorb and redirect force. This is a reactive speed and reactive strength exercise. So, think about it. If I am right here and I just squat down, okay, there's going to be some force, but if I get up on this box and I drop from the box, my body has to absorb more force than if I didn't drop off the box. So that is the purpose of dropping off the box in the first place. So now that we know the purpose is to absorb and redirect force, what you wanna do is you want to hit the ground like a bouncy ball. So I got one of my dog's toys here. I'm sure he's gonna react as soon as I drop this, but you wanna hit the ground like a bouncy ball and bounce back up, okay? So what I mean by that is when you hit the ground, you want to bounce back up as fast as you can. Spend the least amount of time on the ground as possible. So one mistake that people make when doing depth jumps is they get down and then they go all the way down and they jump up as high as possible. What you want to do is hit the ground and just immediately jump up as high as possible. So hit the ground like a bouncy ball. Next. The person who gets the most out of the depth jump is the person who can utilize their stretch reflex and their stretch shortening cycle. As you go down and you absorb that force, you are utilizing your stretch shortening cycle. So if you zoom in cam cameraman on these U's and then this V over here, this is a beginner athlete. He spends more time on the ground than an advanced athlete. An intermediate athlete is able to utilize that stretch shortening cycle faster and then an advanced athlete, it looks more like a V and they actually just hit the ground and jump back up as fast as possible, being as reactive as possible as they can. So that's point number one, absorb and redirect force, bouncy ball, least amount of time as possible. Then you wanna make sure to follow the proper progressions. Don't just go out and do depth jumps after you watch this video. There are four progressions that I like to put my athletes through, and the third progression is actually depth jumps. We never get into depth jumps until we do the first two progressions. So you want to progress through the proper progressions and through the heights of the box. So SJ stands for shock jumps, then we have shock pause jumps, then we have depth jumps, then we have double depth jumps. So let's start with shock jumps. You're gonna do shock jumps from a six inch box, okay? Um, these are also called drop jumps. They're called force absorption jumps. All you're going to do is drop down and absorb the force, absorb the shock that it has on your body. Then after you do a six inch, we'll say three sets of five reps twice a week, then you would move to a 12 inch box. Then you drop down, you absorb the force on a 12 inch box. Then you would get on an 18 inch box, absorb the force there, okay? So those are shock jumps. That's the first progression of a depth jump. Then after that, you would get into shock pause jumps. So this is the same thing as a depth jump, except you're pausing in the middle. So you drop down, you pause, jump up, pause. Okay, so that's a shock pause jump. Then you go to here. 
drop down, pause, jump up, pause. Okay, so shock pause jumps are second. And then you would do the same thing. Six inches, 12 inches, 18 inches, 24 inches, 30 inches. Okay, and then if you're like knees over toes guy, you can drop off of a ladder and be Next, we have death jumps. So when you drop down, you want to hit the ground like a bouncy ball, and unlike the shock pause jumps, you want to hit the ground and jump up as fast as possible. So it's also a little tough on a six inch box um, because it's not really that high. So, okay, and then you would move up to here, okay? Then you would go to an 18 inch box, 24 inch box, 30 inch box, and then a ladder like knees over toes guy. Moving on to point number three. Point number three is that this is a very high intensity exercise. So with any high intensity exercise, you want to go low volume, okay? So think about if you're doing a very intense back squat. Let's say you're using 95% of your one rep max on a back squat and you are trying to move it as fast as you possibly can. Two sets of five reps is a lot different than five sets of two reps. Five sets of two reps is the rep scheme that you should actually use for any high intensity exercise. If you do two sets of five, you're not gonna be able to get five reps at 95% of your one rep max. So the same thing goes with a high intensity exercise like depth jumps. You don't want to do 10 to 15 reps of depth jumps in a row, okay? You want these to be high quality repetitions because we are also training our stretch reflex, our stretch shortening cycle, and our nervous system. We want our nervous system to do these in a fresh, state. We don't want to be fatigued when we do our death jumps. We want the muscles, our nervous system, and our body as a unit to be as effective and as efficient as possible on these death jumps. So once again, the purpose is to absorb and redirect force. This is a reactive speed, reactive strength exercise. Act like you're a bouncy ball, hit the ground and explode as fast as possible. Least amount of time on the ground as you can. Utilize the stretch reflex and the stretch shortening cycle by doing something like three sets of three reps or five sets of two reps okay you want to keep the reps lower and the sets higher so that you can get efficient reps then follow the proper progressions shock jumps shock pause jumps depth jumps and double depth jumps i actually didn't show you what that was so a double depth jump after the depth jump is when you hit the ground and then you go up and you immediately go up again Okay, so that's a double depth jump. So a double depth, depth jump, double depth jump would look like this. Okay, so it's just two in a row, okay? And then remember, high intensity, low volume, okay? Don't do high volume for depth jumps. For me personally, I feel a little rusty on depth jumps right now because I'm not doing depth jumps in this phase of my training, okay? I only do depth jumps in my concentric phase, my peaking phase of my training. So you don't have to do that, but that's what I like to do. I like to do a max strength phase, then I do a strength speed phase, then I do a peaking phase, and during that peaking phase, I add these depth jumps, okay? If you do them all year round, your body's gonna get used to them. It's not gonna have as much effect. It's like caffeine. You drink three caffeines every single day, your body gets used to it. But if you do it once a week, as soon as you do it that once a week and you drink that coffee, now you're buzzing, okay? Same thing with depth jumps. If you do it all year round, your body's gonna get used to that. If you do it once during one phase instead of all phases of your programming, your body's going to react to that much better. So there you have it, depth jumps. Just as depth jumps are proven, so is jump bound. We have a study of long jumpers showing 70% more jump gain when they work on their long jump off either leg. And we have another study on landing and planting mechanics showing that a weaker plant or land makes you 70% more likely to have a knee ligament tear. Now let's trace five examples through history, starting with Derek Rose. He only planted through his left leg because a two foot jump is a left right plant and a one foot jump was a left leg plant. Moving on to the second example, Michael Jordan also planted off one foot through the left leg like Rose did, but off two feet, it was a right left plant. 
So this created a sort of balance. Then the third example, Kobe Bryant, he has the most career dunks off all four plants. He would take off his right leg, his left leg, left, right plant, right, left plant. And then the fourth example is LeBron. Wait a second. LeBron only goes off his left leg. Doesn't that disprove jump balance? No, it's one example. And LeBron has the most muscle mass coming from the ground up, where someone like Zion is built more from the top down. LeBron has the most muscle mass coming from the ground up of any basketball player in history and was already getting head over the rim at 18 years old. So if that's you, well, maybe jump balance could help you be better than LeBron. So you see, you don't have to have this, but what did this do for me, the fifth example? For me, well, I went into my 20s having never grabbed the rim. Now I'm going into my 30s dunking all four plants. It provided a route for me to try jumping as hard as I could, but by staying balanced, I didn't then run into the yo-yo of injuries that even the pro dunkers, who I don't jump as high as, they're constantly yo-yoing with these injuries. And I've even personally helped some of them by getting them to jump balance, and they would get the noticeable reduction of knee pain and increase of jump height. Plus, I've been a real team sport athlete through all this process, and I started dunking after all the pro dunkers. So I'm still going up, I haven't plateaued. Could I get there? Perhaps, but I can definitely help people get the ability to dunk, be able to do it in games, and to be able to be a part of a team and not be yo-yoing up and down with injuries. So now going right into application. You don't even need a ball or a hoop or anything. But what you do need to do is film yourself from a side angle and from a front angle. The first thing I noticed with my jump as a left-right jumper is I noticed that my left knee was really going over my toes a lot, causing a lot of pressure here, but then not so much on the right side. So my muscles were developing imbalanced. And just by bringing my right left plant, so I've now hit even on a vertex with each side. That was my first discovery. I was only a two foot jumper. It took longer for me to realize if I want to be the best at basketball, I need to also be a one foot jumper. So while I've hit 42.5 inches off each right, left and left, right, simply from studying myself in slow motion, I've now just touched into the 40 inch mark off the left leg and off the right leg. And more importantly, that's led to me feeling even a little bit more athletic. So I think if you're in a sport like long jump, no, I don't think you need to do two foot jumping. If you're in a sport like volleyball, no, I don't think you need to do one foot jumping. But I would say for basketball, or if you're a wide receiver, it would be a good idea to have all four plants. Now, you can practice by yourself, no ball, no hoop, nothing. Once your plant feels good, pain-free, you're visually getting as high and your form looks the same, then I would say to start working on your dunk. So let's say, your go-to dunk was, you know, LeBron style inside dribble, boom, right? You would get a lot of athleticism benefits and injury prevention benefits out of now practicing this side and trying to get it to be a mirror image. It's that simple. I don't have anything fancier for you. That's what I've done. I actually have also done depth jumps too. Those are the only two jumping things I've done. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how Nathan teaches the depth jump because the depth jump, think about it, right? Let's say I realized at one point, okay, if I've gotten now to a 30 inch vertical, but my buddy with better genetics has had a 40 inch vertical for the last five years, just because I match his weight room numbers doesn't mean my tendons will be as elastic as his. So I realized that, okay, now if I drop from a, a little bit higher and a little bit higher and so on. So I have not overdone it. The depth jump gets into a lot more risk. So you need to really pay attention and have a coach to guide you through that process. Anyways, I hope that helps. Uh, I'm an open book and it's the truth. What you have in this video right here with jump pounds plus depth jumps has contributed to me being maybe the only guy to go into his 20s having never grabbed rim and now going into his 30s dunking all four plants. And for every one of us having a potential to jump perhaps greater than has been predicted before. Thank you for your time. All right, guys, so there you have it. Depth jumps, 
in jump balance and why it is very important to include both of these in your programming if you want to stay healthy and increase your vertical jump as high as possible. Once again, like this video. If we get it to 2,000 likes, we will do another video like this, another collaboration. Make sure that you share this with everybody you know and then comment, jump down below if you want a free body weight vertical jump training program. And I will see you guys in the next video. Young visionary and I don't know where I am. I'm running blindfolded like I ain't got a plan. You either stay